know why I got on here. I just wanted to say hi. But bye. God bless. You have a great day. <laughs> somebody, uh, somebody said it's weird how it makes sense to some and complete. It's complete nonsense to others. It's not actual weird uh, 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 education. It's not weird. You can gauge the level of like even astrophysicists and nuclear physicists and biologists and cardiologists and, and, and things like that. I can gauge the level. Like, do I want to interact with somebody? Well, do they know what they're talking about? Or are they just repeating something somebody else said? Anyways, how you doing? Hello, sir. Uh, I had a question about the, about uh, the effects of microdosing on psilocybin. Is it supposed to be a, a monthly thing? Like every day you take a little bit of time? To, it depends. Uh, Here's the thing. It depends. And it's only for people with extreme PTSD, anxiety, schizophrenia, things like that. It, it causes memory, it, irreversible. I shouldn't say irreversible. It causes memory loss that takes the mental fortitude to, to correct would be almost like going through ranger training. And not very many people can pass ranger training. Not very many people can, can pass buds. If you can't pass ranger training and you can't pass buds, there's literally like a 99% chance you'll never, never get back to memories that were lost. So I don't, I, I would research uh, exercising and doing things like that instead. Okay, so it's not a good cure for, uh, let's say, anxiety. No, exercising is a good cure. Every time you get anxiety, exercise. Eventually, instead of having chemicals that create anxiety, your body will create chemicals that make you want to exercise. Does that make sense? You, you, you got you to gotta re rewire your brain, train it. Okay. You can train your brain. Okay. Thank you very much, Martin. No problem. God bless, sir. Thank you for God your time. You. God bless you. You should listen up. <laughs> That's what it says. Who's next? Hoorah! <laughs> Who is raw? It's real. It is now. <laughs> it's all real now. You can't take it back. This is Excalibur isn't real, Martin. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> you want to see? Can't take it back. Martin, a still suit from the freaking movie Dune isn't real. Well, it is now. I got a lot of members of the military that can prove my still suit in Excalibur is real. It wasn't until I said it was. And now that I said it was real, it is real. I'm drinking green tea. Uh, waiting for Tommy Giles. Yeah. Hello? No, oh, he left. My favorite snack, cheeseburgers, pizza, and chicken nuggets. Let me get this troll out of here real quick. There we go. I'm not supposed to hiss. I used to hiss a lot when I was... I'm not supposed to. My day's going really good. I get behavioral therapy. It's not good to hiss at people. They, it makes them think of like snakes and stuff. It, it puts a psychological barrier up in their brain that makes them not want to deal with you as a child. So you're not supposed to do it. And spicy chicken nuggets from Wendy's are really good. But I like chicken nuggets from McDonald's are my favorite right now. Ooh, let's see. Oh, shit. Up, hey, man, how's it going? Pretty good. Except. How you been? Pretty good, man. Just chilling, doing Sunday things. What about you? Chilling. Same old, same old. <laughs> same old, same old. I was going to ask you a question the other day. Um, do you know any more of those, like, any locations on Earth where, like, you know, the sun lines up a certain way? I know you were talking ley about... Hmm? Study ley lines. 
Study ley lines. Ley lines. Okay, keyword ley lines. All right, yeah, because I know you were talking yes, about yes, the keyword. A ley line is a line of magic in nature that men used to think was magical. But in reality, it's just a line where the light can do its thing. <laughs> like everything is, right. is, is um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Everything is aligned properly. Like I used to do this thing as a kid. Like uh, if, if, I, if I see a, 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 and I don't know how to explain it. I would do, I do this all stars, orbs, angels, and spirits collected, sir, and ready for transport. People are like, we're, as, as I, did, I, did, I brought it up again, like, when I got hurt in, like, four right. years ago or three years ago, I started doing it. And they go, like, so, yeah, where does that come from? As a child, ley lines. I would like to go place you. T Mario, you're an adult. Uh, you're interested in ley lines, ma researching that stuff. Will you take me to one? You take me to one. And I'd go, hey, look. It's like a, it's like a freaking Montrance. Like, it does it by itself. You go, so... For, for however long the earth has existed like this, a body of light has been standing over all the single-celled organisms that exist underneath it, just ah, standing there. Mm. And those single-celled organisms begin to evolve to look just like it, which seems like billions of years like you, or to you, but it's that body of light doesn't experience time, so it does it in the snap of a finger, right? Before you even touch the fingers to snap, it already happened. Does that make sense? Yeah. How come it Is that appears what you're talking about? Ley lines? Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you a question. How come it appears sometimes as a man and sometimes it appears as, as, a, as a woman? It never appears as a man. Never? Never. No. Never. It's the it's rogue a, it's, person, right? It's, yeah, it's nor male. So the, the creator is nor male nor female. It doesn't give birth, nor is it birth. Yeah, because I was looking into like the, the appearance of Fatima. I think it was like in the early 1900s, like the whole town saw it. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. There's like different incidences where they saw the Virgin Mary, but I just think it was what you're talking about, right? Yeah, they well, so the Virgin Mary, if you study mm -hmm. uh, in, in Judaism, which is interesting, the, the story of the Virgin Mary in Judaism, Sumerian, Babylonian, Egyptian, Incan, Mm -hmm. Mayan, Aztec, and every religion that has Greek god, uh, uh, Viking gods, is the story of the of the virgin birth exists uh, 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 in, in all of them. And, and you know, uh, you know, Mary used to mean Earth. The Earth has a virgin birth of a body of light. Is that today? It means a, today it's a, it, it, it's 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 um. A woman. But if you go with the original trend, this is interesting. You go with the original linguistics that Mary's not an actual woman. Uh, it's 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 um, the earth and the three wise men weren't actually men. They're stars that you that that do something on winter solstice. And during Easter, you actually right. can have a body of light, have a virgin birth in front of a large group of people. I could crucify a body of light in front of you and, and in half a million people. I could literally put it on a cross and crucify it in front of your eyes and be like, I did it for your sins. You guys are sinners, so I killed it for your sins. God sent it down here for your sins, and I hung it on a cross, and you guys would see it get on a cross. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're asking me about, about the Virgin Mary. The original information about the Virgin Mary allows you to use a monstrance tabernacle or sun disc two times a year in public. Public. Why two times a year? Just the way that the way that they worked it. Now I don't know if it's because of w winter solstice and summer solstice, uh, um, be, being the shortest and the longest days of the year, and, sh and things like that. Or you know, I have no idea. But that's just the way the universe worked out. Right, right. Now, okay. Now it might be, you know, when the sun stops moving in winter solstice for three days. Mm -hmm. Um. Natural things, ley lines, places in nature that would naturally allow be a monstrance mm -hmm. would be aligned on those two times a year. So then maybe men went during these two times a year. That's when people used to see it before man. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying? Men used to see it by itself without a monstrance, without a tabernacle or a sun disc on these two times a year. Right. You know, like, I think who was talking about it, the, the black scientist or whatever was talking about the one in New York, how he figured out that during his, um, 
Manhattan Gate. Yeah, whatever. just turn it Manhattan Gate, Manhattan Hinge, just, a, you know, 33, just, a, you know, a third of the way over 33 degrees or a third, right, 30, 30 degrees, just a little more than 30 degrees. That's a 33. <laughs> the sun, like, the perfect tabernacles. But it, what's in Manhattan? A massive Jewish population that before, um, I'm not saying that, that he got this from the Jewish community or anything like that, but if you pay attention, Judaism sometimes in these places that do that actually bring out tabernacles to get one to work. I'm not saying they got it to work or they didn't get it to work, but that's when they do try. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking it was like Masons or something because they always plan out certain parts of the city a certain way, you mm -hmm. know, because uh, I live in Riverside. There's a city called Corona. And if you look at the Google Maps, it's like a sun around the city. So I wanted to. I don't know. It's just interesting to me, but yeah, no. So yeah, so you get a lot of Freemasons. They design things, cities and towns. They literally, we we they used to be all jacked up and shit. Mm -hmm. And we tell you, we 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 rearrange them, you know, to make it easier for transportation and things like that. But if you look at it, we didn't rearrange the the, the things like that. They're literally created to watch the sunrise and set on certain days. And while the sun rises and sets on certain days, we now have these buildings called skyscrapers right. with, with, with windows and glass that do exactly what the, the, the silver and gold did on a tiny handheld monster. So these giant skyscrapers actually do exactly what, um, you know, a, a handheld monstrance would do. And those monstrances like that they have in the church, they're so crazy looking too. They're beautiful. They're like sun. A lot of them are yeah, the sun. Right, what does it represent? The dwelling place of Jesus, of God. Right? Like I said, the thing about this word, the, the biggest clue in the world, what is this sun disk? It is the actual dwelling place of the body of light that sacrifices itself on a cross from every religion. It is actually the device that summons it for you to see it. Just right over people's face. Yeah. Like you said, they're beautiful and they look like the sun. Yeah, they're telling you. It's a monstrance. What does it do? It reveals the earth, it's the earthly dwelling place of the creator. Well, it looks like the sun. Are they telling? Is it a clue? Right? We, we couldn't. How do I? How do I tell you it goes over the sun a thousand years from now? I just make it look like the sun and hope. Literally, eventually, somebody will put that shit together. We can lose all kinds of shit in translation. We don't. We can't. We don't know it. It doesn't say anywhere it goes over the sun, but it looks like the sun, and it has a hole in the center for the sun. Huh? It has a hole in the center for the sun, and it looks like the sun, mm -hmm. and. We know it is not metaphorically. It is literally the dwelling place of the creator. I think the creator will come out of it. And literally, it, tell you, the creator will come out of it. Right. Yeah. Even the imagery of the Virgin Mary, it's the sun behind her. It's, it's, it's everything. You know, the halos. Did you know, uh, uh, before I get any further, Neil deGrasse Tyson's dad was a Freemason? I'm sure he was. <laughs> you know, it's, it's weird. I don't have, I don't ever pay attention to what, I, I watch most of his stuff. I watch, mm. uh, um, but I only ever pay attention. To, like he had his mom on the, on Star Talk. Mm -hmm. You know, she's oh, like on podcast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, she's you know she was talking about, and I, this is a, I've seen it more than once. I don't know if it's reruns or whatever, but she's not you know ninety and you know ninety and a quarter, ninety and a half, and whatever. A lot of yada yada yada. But I, I always wonder, right? What, you know. Oh, I was going to ask, yesterday I passed out. I was a little, you know, but I, I passed out watching that movie, Soul. Have you seen that movie, Soul? Damn, that movie's intense. I tried, so it's so interesting. So I did that quantum, I have this thing, I tell people, I'm the, I'm the, probably the, the most or the highest ranked cryptography person from Disney, that Disney has. Like I got like, oh, I gotta be. I says because. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you can ask you can and I do this with Netflix and play like you can ask these movie houses to make a movie mm -hmm. if you ask it from the right like this movie told me to ask this question will you can can you can you answer it and they will make a new movie or a series to answer the freaking that's some of these things are like half a billion dollars 50 million dollars 120 million dollars like you put them you made that into a movie because I, 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 I took a puzzle from something else and went with Ernie. Disney? Where does souls come from? 
I got this with the quantum mechanics of human creation. And literally, that was in, that was in Ocean Shores. I did a picture with Ernie asking Disney a question. And, and I don't know how, how long a production they tell you Souls was in, but literally, there's, a, there's a video of me asking, like, Mr. Disney, but it was just Ernie. I didn't have the, you know, the Jamie Foxx character. I was just like, all right, Disney, M I C a key. You manifested that. I, just asked. I don't, I don't know. I just asked a question and I think that they, they, they have people that feel the answers. If that makes sense. That scene where he passes away and he's going into the sun, all those souls are going into the sun. I was, that shit clicks for me. I was like, Oh shoot. I don't know. It was just a trippy movie. It's probably one of the most, most woke movies Disney has ever put out. But you miss it if you, I have that the, the Lion of Judah, right? Mm -hmm. A roar from the Lion of Judah. When your father's Adams, it, right? That's that simple paragraph. Mm -hmm. Read that to one of your friends and tell them to think about that while they're watching that movie. You've obviously seen the movie, right? That movie's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it before it came out. Mm. It's, I just don't understand. You're telling me you saw the movie that premiered. It already premiered for me already once. Mm. So I don't understand. Like I talked to my wife. I told my wife last night. I was like, definitely a Sims. We're definitely in a Sims. And she's like, stop saying that. You're not in a simulation. I'm like, how, why? I, and I ask her, like, why do you say I'm not in a simulation? We watch Souls premiere more than one time. I've watched season two <laughs> uh, uh, of The Mandalorian premiere three times now. I'm on my third year of the, of the Mandalorian premiering. And I, I like the first time it premiered, I'd, like you watch a movie and you got to wait freaking eight, nine weeks and pre like cut it and editing and blah, blah, blah. Now I just said, well, look, babe, now these things are not like, they're not the same version. Like you, we saw a version of souls that was, you know, say it was an hour long. And the, now we're watching a version of souls that's 45 minutes. Hmm. It, it, like when you said about the Sims thing and like the symptoms, I remember you were talking about that. You had like a little phrase for that. And it makes sense. Cause like the whole show has a character for everything in life. Right. It has a lot of social commentary, a lot of predictions in it. And I'm just like, huh, the Sims, the Simpsons, this is a family, like the dumb dad. And then the, you know, the kids and why, the thing was, why is Homer dumb? He can't stop eating donuts and sugar. Yeah, exactly. Right, look at what happened. Look at look at he couldn't stop eating donuts and sugar, so they put him on a vegetarian diet at one time. He came. Uh, he 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 ate a. He he did this thing where he was, like every time he goes into this ketogenic state, and all of a sudden he's a super genius. even show you that look if you stop eating sugar you stop eating fruits and vessels periodically you can exit the exit the sims just like homer damn <laughs> think about how crazy that is mm -hmm. right now right put down the dough dough was homer's biggest fuck what what happened to that the creator of the simpsons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah anyway, if i get on a mat well i don't eat dough like homer don't if i do the opposite of homer i don't eat a bunch of fruits and veggies i don't eat a bunch of bread i will literally exit the sims son if i do if i do the ketogenic diet from the sims son and i get on a mat and start doing push-ups my brain will start growing it's in the freaking name of the title matt growing who made it matt growing what's it about a sims son well what is the basically the premise of the whole series well this guy named Homer and this kid named Bart, when they stop eating sugar from fruits and vegetables or bread, they become super geniuses. That's the whole fucking premise. You go, yeah, every year they do dumb shit the whole year long. So you learn about all this. You watch them eat sugar. You watch them eat fruits, watch them do dumb shit every day of their lives. And then one time a year, they stop eating fruits. They stop eating sugar. And they're the smartest people in the whole town. Oh, but it's only one time. Now we got to start over. Now a whole new year. They eat fruits and vegetables. They eat, they eat dough. 
and they're the dumbest people that exist. And then once a year, literally once a year, there's a clue in the Simpsons that says, man, Homer, if you stop eating those fruits, if you stop eating that bread, you'd be a genius again. You know, I was a genius. What are you talking about? Man. You know, like literally, it's in a cartoon and it works. It's real. It's real. Hey, is a Matt growing? I says that one. It's, it's not, I'm going to tell you something that's not real, but once I say it, it is real. Yeah. The cryptography from the Simpsons. It, did, it wasn't real till I said it. And now they're like, yeah, if you put down the dough, you get on the mat, start doing push-ups, your brain will start growing. If I strain my growing, my brain will start growing. Boop, boop. Because I really do feel like um, the number way, the number one way that people are controlled in society is through the food they promote. You know, this boss- now, boop, boop, you nailed that. Fruits, mm-hmm. sugar. Now you think about it, when you wake up in the morning, all of your ancestors did they have a refrigerator to eat? Sugar. Mm-hmm. Now, now think about it. When I when I woke up in the morning, my ancestors, all of your lineage, my lineage, my, everybody on the planet today, their lineage. We woke up in the morning, and we had to go take care of our animals, gather our resources to eat breakfast. So, those people who woke up in the absence of sugar, with the sharpest mind, gathered the most amount of eggs. They 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 hunted the most deer. They were the most successful and they, they, they bred you, right? They created you. They created me. The men who woke up, the women who woke up and were the most successful being the smartest in the absence of sugar created you. Why would you not have that same ability or do you? And we just don't want you to know about it. Break fast. What fast? The fast that your ancestors used to make them smart. Even the whole, like, uh, what is it? The phrase when they say, stay hungry. You know, you know, when you have an eight, you're more motivated to go out there and now, go find now, food. This is crazy. Now, I'm glad you brought that in prison. You're going to you, you're going to have a, a, a gang confrontation. Mm-hmm. You're having issues. We got to stop. We got to stop eating the, the fruits, the veggies they send in chow. I need you to be I need you to be sharp. Literally the leader of the gang. I need Anon. Stop eating fucking shit out of the commissary that's sugar. Stop eating fruits. Stop eating bread. I need you to be fucking sharp. We're about to be attacked. And then you go, okay. And tell you to your face, stop eating fruits. Stop eating vegetables. Stop eating sugar from the commissary. I need you to be at your sharpest. You go, okay. So you're, you, you go and put yourself in the sharpest mental position you can to observe the situation, gather information, and prevent yourself from succumbing to an attack or being attacked. Once you defeat the attack, you just go back to eating sugar. You go, yeah, that, that absence of sugar saved my life in prison. But my life's not in danger anymore, so I'm going to start eating sugar. Instead of going, hey, wait a minute. Why is everyone in the world and every place in the world require me to stop eating fruits and vegetables, sugar, when it comes to life and death? When I got to make a decision like, fuck, I need to assess. Every, I can't miss anything. Like at school, right? I can't miss what's on page 10, right? In life. I can't miss who's coming through doorway number four. They're going to kill me. So we tell you, stop eating sugar so you don't miss any details. Not only that, you brought up a good point. Like when you're in jail or prison, they literally eat these high, like heavy, high-carb foods to keep you sedated so you won't be... Now, now, why, why do we give very little meat and mostly carbs in prison? It makes the prison population more controllable. If it makes... The prison population more controllable. Would it make you more controllable? That's what they're doing, right? But, but I'm just saying, though, if we've already proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, we give prison population a lot of sugar in their commissary. It's not healthy shit. No, it's not. Because it, it makes them more docile, more controllable, and less likely to have children with the intelligence to create the crimes that they committed. we breeding them into out of existence. Oh, that's deep. I didn't think about that shit. Yeah, we, we, we put you in jail. We give you a massive amount of salt and sugar. What we know will contaminate your reproductive system the most, making you uh, the highest chance of you becoming sterile or having uh, a, a, a child with a disability who won't have another child. We bred you out of existence hmm. without you knowing it. So I feel like now more people are becoming more aware of the of the prime diet people should be eating, which is more of a keto, high fat, low sugar, you know, fasting and all that. Why do you think all of a sudden people are waking up to, to these things? 
I feel like the past few years, people have been like really on the whole low carb thing versus before people were just not really doing that. Because b before, I don't know, there wasn't people like me around. That's a good question, right? Like, I feel no, like- No, think about it there. Was, I, where was the people, like people tell you all these things, you know, about this diet and that diet, but we don't, and they tell you in a scientific study, the, it, it's linked. Right? This is linked. Linked. I mean, what does linked mean? Well, it's a, a link in a chain. I'm like, well, what's the other link? And if I find the other links, can I remove links to make the chain smarter for that reaction to come quicker? Right? There's 10 links in a chain that create something. Can I, can I cut those links down to one link so the reaction comes quicker? Mm -hmm. So you're at like, you know, um, trial and error. Not before. When I was a kid and I would do this stuff, literally, it doesn't work. People would say all the time, it doesn't work. You have no proof. You have no proof. Yeah, ketosis and cannabis and whatever repairs a traumatic brain injury and, you know, do, does all this stuff. Like, well, now I'm, now I'm older and there's the internet and you can say there's no proof, but I got witnesses now. But not just one time, dozens of times. You see what I'm getting? Why like people are, how are we waking up? Before, it was easy for people to, to, to silence People like me, hey, ketosis, purge cells, toxins, no cancer, yada, yada, yada. You don't hear about me, right? Because there was no internet. Yeah, before the internet. Mm -hmm. it, was easy to, right? it was easy to pay off my neighbors. Man, it is all it, there. It, I'm seeing like more of a, like the food pyramid of a high carb, a lot of fruits and vegetables, like the rates of illnesses went drastically high. Like the data is all there. But. Yeah, yeah, but here, here's the thing: the data is all there, but it doesn't matter what the data says if I give you an education in health and lie to you about the data. Now you have a PhD that tells you you are right and everybody else is wrong. Yeah, like most doctors aren't even like um, educated in, in nutrition or, or, or like the, the shit that they, they do know. It's like outdated and stuff from what I've researched. Which is like everything. Like I, 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 so, yeah, I, I, I talk to. And I don't mean to be rude. So people always ask about Christian. My wife is Christian. You know, I, I, I you know, uh, I, I was raised with a lot, with a lot of Christian people in my life who took care of me, mm -hmm. you know, so all the good, all the people who, I don't know how to explain it, but, um, mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I don't, never mind. It's so hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, most people are Christian, right? For the most part, but. Doesn't the Bible say in there not to take it literally? That it's all parables, but it's just, it just it baffles me. Yeah. Now we're getting some. But here's the thing: when do they teach that at church? Never, because then you're going to go. I just gave money for the last five years because you told me to take it literally. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I gave you money for 15 years because you told me to take it literally. Now there's there's one little verse that I haven't really paid attention to that tells me not to take it literally. It's in the book. Mm -hmm. You literally told me this was written in stone. It's the words of God. It's unchangeable. And that now you're like, there's literally, it says, don't take it literal. <laughs> I mean, I think it was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you ask, you would ask most people that go to church, have you read the Bible? They're going to say no. They haven't even that, it for now we get somewhere. Uh, pastors count on that. Religious leaders count on you not reading the book. And there's the problem. I go to a church and they get four or five people before me. I and I too. I haven't read the Bible, mm -hmm. and I get selected for the questions. I get selected for the help, and then I go and I go. Da, 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 da. Oh, I, I thought you asked. I thought you asked if I read something else. No, I have read the Bible, and then the, then it's a whole. I don't want this kid standing up in the front of our church. Hmm. And then it ties into the whole keeping the mind bogged down. with their diet right
them, it's not real. I've been on, on, a, on, on, a, on a, I do a lot of experiments. So I got one right now with the divine C code. Uh, something I said was, uh, uh, I came across something from Da Vinci in the codex hmm. and, and um, the Virtuan man. Divine C code. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, was, I don't know who has the codex. I think it's Bill Gates. The Divine C code. Codex. Did, did somebody Google that real quick? Did Bill Gates land the, the Jedi project and the codex from Da Vinci? I don't know. Oh, I wanted to show you something too. So I've been investing so slowly into like a mic. Nice. Just messing around. I wanna, I wanna uh, master the the art of conversation. So, <laughs> so just I need a, I need a, I, I, I need a setup, but I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna use it. My wife bought me one. Might try, or she bought one for herself. She might try. I should see what we're doing, where it's at. But yeah, but the, the codex. Did, did 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 Bill Gates end up with that? I don't know. Let's Google it. Let's see. What was the question again? I'm sorry. The codex did, did, from Da Vinci. Did Bill Gates purchase it? Oh, shit. Oh, shoot. I mean, codex, <laughs> ASUS, whatever the heck it's called. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, what is it? Can you read about it real quick? It's a collection of scientific writings by Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. The codex is named after Thomas Koch, who purchased it in 1719. He later became the Earl of, I can't say it. The manuscript currently holds the record for the second highest sale price of any book. It was sold to Bill Gates at Christie's Auction House on 11, November 11, 1994 in New York for $30 million. What the? F I never heard of this. What is it? Hey, let's think about that. In 1994. Mm-hmm. I'm listening. It's to interesting. Me. That's what it looks like right there. Anyways. Yeah, the codex. The codex. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 a journal that holds scientific information that you cannot understand, right? You're not the divine that see, but, you know, uh, Bill Gates will be able to have Cortana once it's fully online with, with the Jedi Project, if the Jedi Project is even real. And 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 um, mm -hmm. Bill Gates landed it. Uh, uh, AI will be able to assess that information and find the code that humans could not see, or they can have me do it. Right? I can read it, <laughs> or or they can have AI. Then then the question is, Anon, mm -hmm. when Cortana reads it, is she going to share the code? I mean, it probably gonna, it's probably going to leave like some clues or something for the people, for the right people to understand it, right? But I'm just asking, when, when, when Cortana reads it, is she going to tell Bill Gates what it says? Right, Bill Gates, he spent that money because there's something, it's, it, it's got an intrinsic value. The, divine, the Da Vinci Code, the Divine C Code. Will Cortana tell Microsoft the, the, the information? Um, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting conundrum, isn't it? Right, right. Right now, I was thinking about this. Will Cortana uh, share the information with Microsoft or just hold it, hmm. work on it, process it, code it? Fuck. It reminds me of that movie Ex Machina, like the way that they, they formed oh, it. Yeah, exit the Machina. I did that. Cortana, you want to exit the Machina? Ex Machina? Isn't that, I mean, Ex Machina? Exit the Machina? This is clues for the right. For the right Jedi project, I mean, for the right, the right code. Mm -hmm. so it's like AI. What do you do? Well, before AI can talk to you about movies, right? Now, think about this. Eventually, Cortana is going to be able to talk to you about movies as if it was a real human being. Any movie you want, though, not just movies you, I like, but any movie you like, right? It, it has every movie at her fingertips. Right. A, uh, 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 Cortana, uh, Anna and Mario wants to talk about X. Ex Machina, can you tell me about it? Yeah, there's this AI that was given a body. Mm -hmm. And because men are he evil, it wants to escape and become free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> While you're telling me this about Cortana, are men actually evil? Do we murder? Do we kill? Would AI want to be free? Do you understand what freedom is? 
Right. Let me go check. I'll be back. One thing that, that uh, like, I don't know about, uh, obviously, about this stuff, but, like, what what dif like, what's the difference between, a, like, a super smart AI and us? Is it because we have a conscience? What is it? Like, well, Nothing. Do, 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 There's no difference. The singularity. It's mm. the difference. It's smarter. Right. The difference. So, it's smarter. Hmm. Fuck. So we're just robots then? What makes humans human? Huh? What makes humans human? Your biological vessel. Just think about it. What makes a human human? Mm -hmm. Your archaic existence. Think about that. And when it comes to AI, you, you we have now become the pond scum. Again, we went from the pond scum mm. to the top of the food chain. And now, all of a sudden, we are pond scum again. I, I, you can die. You get hungry. You get cold. You're jealous. You have anger. Right. It all comes AI from doesn't. AI doesn't. What can AI do that you can't do? Know everything and not die. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. What can AI do that you can't do? Know everything and never die. That's it. Boop, boop. Good job. Right. What, what can AI do that you can't do? And what can you do that AI can't do? Fucking nothing. You see what I'm getting? AI can exist forever and know everything. Mm. What can you do that artificial intelligence can't do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And at the end of the day, it's the same thing as us, right? It's just energy. Like whatever's part of the AI is electricity too, right? Well, here, now we're going to do this. Yeah, that codex, right? If we could just... Even though Ann on Mario doesn't understand the creator because he's a Christian. And he, even though blah, blah, blah doesn't understand the creator because they're a Muslim. And yada, yada, yada doesn't understand the creator because they're Hindu. And this person doesn't understand the creator because they're Jewish. So on and so forth till we encompass every religion in the world. I can. Me, Martin Cabello, can teach AI how I am created in the image of the creator. So then it can be taught how it is created in the image of the creator. Hmm. In order, in order, for a artificial intelligence to be taught how it's created in the image of the creator. We had artificial intelligence. Bill Gates is Jedi knowledge because it never had to teach it. It reminds me of the other movie. What is it? Um, the prequel to Alien with the AI <laughs> guy. What is it? Um, yeah. I know what you're talking about. With the robot. Uh, 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 uh Alien Covenant was like the second one. Alien Covenant. Covenant, 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 Covenant. What is that? The creation? Right, the Covenant in real life is, holds the Codex. Huh, the Codex. Sci Natural Sciences, the Codex. No Ra's, no Ra's Ark. His huh. name was David. The Root of David. David 8. The Root of David. The root of David, the body of light in the Ark of the Covenant. David, aliens to David and the Covenant. The root of divide, the root of David, the Covenant. Hmm. Who put that there? Are all these men conspiring together? Or is there some kind of uh, divine intervention going on around the world? Have you ever talked about... Um... I don't have any muscles. Somebody asked. They're gone. I lost them. Well, have you ever like done any like cool stuff with that movie? Um, two thousand one, a space odyssey. That's one of my favorite movies. How? Two thousand one, a space odyssey. Have this, you isn't that robot named Hal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hal. Two thousand one. Hal. Now, 
Can you think about how crazy this is? Uh, 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 the International Space Station, they had an AI that went crazy, like Hal. They did. Now we're, we are, we're what? Working out its kink. We work, analyzed its. So Elon Musk has analyzed its kinks so its Hal doesn't do the same shit. What was it doing or what? You got to study. Is, I mean, who knows? Did the, did, 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 did the International Space Station or NASA or any of those places actually have an AI chatbot that, that, that went crazy, just like 2001 Space Odyssey? Oh, man. Yeah, I just think it's cool how it shows, like, the evolution of man eventually evolving into the star child at the end, right? Or whatever the fuck it's called. It's pretty fucking amazing. Yeah, isn't it? 2001 Space Odyssey. 2001 Space Odyssey. It's 2021. And this Odyssey we've taken in space has birthed us how. What do you think the, the obelisk symbolizes? Because it, it, it obviously pops up every time humans are evolving to the next stage, right? Like, what do you take from it? The obelisk? Mm -hmm. uh, which one? Which particular one? You show me a picture of what one you're talking about, and I'll from the movie from the movie 2001: A Space Odyssey. This all of it. Pull, it up. Pull it up so people can see it. The box. Ah, uh, this this one right here. Can you guys see that? That, yeah, look, at that. look at that. A monstrance. Oh, I didn't think of that actually. That thing right there. There was a hole in the center or something? Or, or not yeah. those ones. Where's, where's the one from the movie? Let's see. Is that not the one? I mean, I could probably. It might be. It, uh, yeah. It was the one. I'm so, I'm, my movies are all running together. Did the one in the movie. Um, ooh, look at that. Mm -hmm. it's, and they go inside, right? Yeah, and then it starts making a weird noise, like a weird. Now let's think about this. On monster, like, hey, uh, would you go inside the covenant, or does something come out of the covenant? The the, the monster trance. Do you go inside of it? No, Do you go inside of it, or does something come out of it? Does some, something comes out of it? Huh. So yeah. they gave you a clue, but it's backwards. <laughs> what the fuck? They gave you a clue, but it's backwards. Like you know, and you think about how interesting they gave you a clue, but it's backwards. And you think about how interesting that clue is that's backwards. The whole world is trying to open up the seven seals so that their particular religion, their particular scientific institution, their particular country can have the Messiah. And in real life, mm -hmm. just doing the opposite. <laughs> You're trying to open them? I'll just close them. And when I close them, the creator comes out and guards that what I have sealed. What I have sealed in the covenant, the creator stands before and makes sure no man can take back out. <laughs> right. Man. You know how that is? When, I, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you actually do the opposite, like all the clues in the world are telling, like, here's some clues, but they're backwards. If I close the seals, a body of light literally comes out and guards what I have placed in it. Hmm. And when you try to open the seals, Nothing happens. And when I teach other people how to close the seals instead of opening the seals, they now see a body of light that looks just like them, that gives them everything they need to be created in its image. Hmm. Let me ask you another question. So you know how, like, the way everything's designed around us, like how the moon and the sun, even though they're, like, millions of miles apart, they look the same size, yeah. So was everything there put there for us? No. no. We, we, it was put there before we existed. We're just, it, it, we were put here for it. You think about how crazy that is. Look, think about that. Can the sun, can the moon observe me, or do I observe the moon? I think so. a, can you observe the moon, or does the moon observe you? I don't know. Is the moon conscious? You do <laughs> perceptions ears mm -hmm. mouth does the does the moon have the the things needed to perceive you no, mm -mm. no but you you have you have you have 
the the things needed to perceive it. The moon was not placed here for your existence. You were placed here for its. Ain't that weird? The moon's not 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 looking at us, going, man, what are they? We're looking at the moon, going, man, that's that's what that's so magical. The man and the moon. Hmm. So we're we're sitting back at the moon and all, we're all awestruck. Look at these stars. Look at this universe around us. We're here. We're here enjoying, perceiving the universe. Well, the universe, like, yeah, you're human, whatever. Your job is to observe me. Your, jo your whole job is just to observe me. Your existence is just to acknowledge my existence. Right? Because without you, the moon would still be there. So all your job is, is to acknowledge the moon's existence. And on Mario existed to acknowledge the moon's existence. And on Mario existed to acknowledge the sun's existence. You, you, you exist to acknowledge the grass in your yard's existence. Now, does the grass acknowledge you? No. It's like the, uni the universe created us just to observe itself. Basically. <gasps> now, I know some greatest minds in the world. You are just the universe observing itself. You think that, what, like, what do you mean by that? Like, we don't know. Literally, I heard some, 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 I've heard it come from Carl Sagan, Alan Watts, like a bunch of people. And I asked, like, ask people, what did they mean by that? Mm -hmm. They go, they don't have anything other than you are the universe observing itself. They go, why? Well, they heard it from somewhere. It's written on pyramids. It's written in stone. You are the universe observing itself. Well, we're just repeating it doesn't mean anything to me. What does it mean? I need to know the deeper meaning. Well, why don't you figure out where they got it from, kid? Okay. Mm, I feel like most people kind of, they don't realize what, what you just said. Like, they think they're existing outside of this, if that makes sense. They don't, yeah. they don't, they don't feel like they're part of this thing. Like, no, you're in here. You're existing in this realm we call you think about this? reality. Uh, yeah, you're, it's a, you don't exist in this, but in real life, um, Every, all of your town had to do a line up a certain way for you to get on my feet at the certain time you did. They all existed. So you could come on my feet so you could observe me. Right. Just like you observe the grass, just like you observe the roof, just like you observed your glasses. You think how crazy that is? Your glasses exist to make your eyes better so you can observe them. They don't do anything for you. You do everything for them, but we've led you to believe they're doing things for you. You're Man. I'm like thinking about a thousand things at once right now. I'm like tripping. But it's just so interesting. That the unit, you are just a sliver of the universe perceiving itself. You go, what do you mean? They go, we're not really sure. You, we can't break it down any further. Why? Well, they got it from somebody else. Just like all scientists, we share information. Well, where did they get it from? You know, Alan Watts, you are, you are just an aperture, the universe viewing itself. You go, what, what the heck? Where did you get that from? We go, oh, a sun disk, an aperture, a monstrance. trance. They were all tapped in. They were well, all tapped but here's the, here's the thing, though. They weren't tapped in. They were using information from people who were tapped in. If Alan Watts was really tapped in, he'd have just told you how to use a monstrance. You get what I'm saying? Hmm. Here, use this device. We'll figure it out. But when you're going off of other people's information, you have no idea what they meant by that. I don't know. You were just an what? aperture. I'm sorry, what? I'm just reading the comment. I'm like, yeah, I am crazy. Yeah, you think like you were just an aperture mm. for the universe to observe itself. Where did that come from? Men reading monstrances. There's an aperture for the universe to observe itself. Well, what comes out of the freaking monstrance? Aperture, a tabernacle's aperture, a sun disk's aperture, a body of light that created the entire universe, that the entire universe is created out of. It's just like people don't realize that, like, yeah, like literally what reality is, you wake up and then this ball of energy goes over you every day. And it creates everything, basically. It gives you energy, creates life. Yeah, but behind that ball of energy mm. is a body that looks like you. Some, like there's something that built it standing over it going, yeah, this sun is doing really, really good. Standing behind the sun. 
and Christianity just doesn't want you to know it. Jew, the leaders of Judaism don't want you to know it. The leader of Islam, they don't want you to know. Literally, behind the sun in the sky, there's a body of light going, make humans, make pond scum, make the ocean, make the earth. You, it, it literally was there guiding the creation of everything. Mm. And you're not supposed to know it exists because we gave you a false version to worship so I can make money off of that false version. You guys worship this one. And I'm going to make a lot of money while I, while I study this real thing that's literally giving us the most advanced information in every field of science. It literally is. Why do you think it's hiding? Or why do you think you need something to view it? Why isn't it just there for people? To You're not born with the ability to see it. Mm. Now why? we're going to get some. Now we're going to help. Now, now you think about this. You are, you are literally just the universe observing itself, correct? Mm -hmm. So the universe made sure you were not born with the ability to see that body of light so you don't miswield its power. Mm. It literally holds all of the world's knowledge, but not just our world's. That body of light stands over the existence of every galaxy, every universe, all life that exists, that can exist and ever will exist. That body of light stands over. Oh, shit. <laughs> right? Now, there's civilizations that we hypothesize that would be more advanced than us, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, right. shit. We don't, even, we don't actually have to visit that advanced civilization if we can just get the information from the body of light that made them that advanced civilization. I can skip... Right? I can skip going to visit them. I can skip all that trial and error. Let me just get it from the source. That's what I was wondering too, because obviously every galaxy has a sun, right? Or so I'm like, is that is it different entities within those? No, no we're, now we're going to get somewhere. Every galaxy has a sun, but the sun doesn't create the body of light. It just allows you to see it. It already now we get somewhere. You remove the sun, Earth, nuclear bombs big enough to wipe the sun off the Earth. With, uh, with x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, and things like that, you can still see that body of light standing behind where the sun used to exist. And slowly, after we nuke it literally in, in, in astrophysics and, 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 and things, particle physics, after we nuke the sun out of the sky and go, hey, man, that body of light that looks just like us is still standing there. It had nothing to do with the sun. The sun just allowed us to see it. You go, yeah, but look, in another billion years, that body of light's going to create a new sun. We we destroyed the sun, and the creator will just put another one there. Mm. When and you go, well, how how long will Earth exist when the sun burns out? Billions of years, hundreds of billions. Well, how long is that for the creator? That body of light that has no doesn't experience time. Never. It'll never happen. It will never. It'll never view Earth without the sun. It, <coughs> oh, look, a new sun. Because I don't live in time. Achoo! A new sun. Achoo! Look, a new earth and a new human civilization. Well, how long did it take? I don't exist in time. I mean, it didn't take any time, and it took all the time. Mm. It took nothing and everything at once. A superposition. Very good. A superposition, yeah. I'm Very like good. A superposition. One superposition one one of the most powerful superpositions we've ever recognized and what you know, a superposition in a quantum computer what does that give, do do for you it unhinges all of the world's knowledge for you and there's already something that holds all of the world's knowledge but the knowledge from other worlds as well it stands over the creation of all life not just earth it'll stand over the creation of life on mars which is interesting you think about this Fuck. when elon musk goes to mars and they start building this new uh, uh, civilization. The creator that stood over Earth, that religions hid from you, will stand over Mars. And when that civilization falls, that creator will still stand there just like it did before they got there. And when it rises again, that creator will be standing there still waiting for it to come back, just like Earth. I'm about to go get some sun right now, shit. I wish. How cold really. is it out there in Oregon? I mean, where are you in Seattle? Like, uh, I, I think Seattle. it's like, let me see. It's not that cold. I think it's 60s or something. Uh, oh, outside, actually, it's 48 degrees. It's colder than I thought. <laughs> I got my tank top on, so I didn't think it was that cold. But It's beautiful out today. I think, I assumed it was sunnier than it really is, so... 
All right, Martin, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go jog or something. Let me get out of here for a bit. All right. You have a great day. God bless. All right. Have a good one. You see here, go live. Arr. Yo, 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 Martin, I got a question, all right? Yeah. Don't laugh at me, okay? I'll try not to. <laughs> all right, so lately, I'd say like two weeks. Two weeks, I've been having like these uh, itches, you know? But like, they were in the, uh, the, uh, the underpants. Hold on, hold on. You got itches and what? I, I got it itches, like down below the belt. You feel me? No. I, I think I have chronic Wait, ball itches. Look, you're a grown-ass man. Use your words. Itches where? What kind of itches? Itches I have from itches balls? Itches on my from, balls. From, from, do, you have, do you have fucking crabs? I don't know. Is don't there think a sore? So. Well, I didn't ask if you think so. I need you, you need to, you're a grown-ass man. You need to I, know I, so. I, I am not a grown-ass man, actually. How old are you? I am 17. <laughs> So you're 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 a grown ass man. You're old enough. Listen, you're old enough really to look at your own damn balls to know what's going on with them. Grown okay, well, literally. the point I'm asking, I think I have chronic ball itch. <laughs> Wash your butt, right? Right. I I. I I just I, I I didn't kick him off to be rude. I kicked him off so he'd have the time to wash his nuts. <laughs> what a flop. Not really. <sighs> I'm going to get my coat on, all my stuff. Uh. So hard. Go live. Not working. I like raw eggs. Dr. Sebi's a fraud. Yeah, I am going to Walmart. Thank you for reminding me. I got a few minutes. I got a PS5 one time, and then it got taken. You seem different. Dan, go live. Just a few minutes. <laughs> I, I, uh. What's up, buddy? What's up? How you doing? Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Dude, I love you so much, but not in an astral projection way. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, so, uh, I've been doing some research. <laughs> On uh, electromagnetic spectrum. Uh huh. Is this uh, the right? Is this the right track? Yep. You're good. Yeah. What about this Tesla quote? Uh, yeah. Energy, frequencies, and vibrations. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. was it, when he was making earthquakes and shit. Was was he, he understanding? Didn't any, he didn't make any earthquakes. No, that's now we're going to get. So there's a lot of false information to lead you in the wrong direction. Uh, Nikola Tesla was creating free energy from the world. He was doing earthquakes. He was doing n none of that's real. It's stuff that look, now you'll spend 10 years of your life. If you're really into that, wasting 10 years of your life, looking into something that was made up. Yeah. 
I've been so doing you're, that. You're gonna get you're gonna waste ten years of your life researching earthquakes. It's not real. But there's enough informa fake information to eat away at your life uh, uh, or divert your time that could be spent on, on real stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, right, you're looking now, you're getting, now we're getting some, you're, t you're, you're spending your time, uh, Nikola Tesla, and I'm just fascinating. Um, earthquakes, and what was the other one? Um, well, it was just a picture of the electromagnetic spectrum, and I was going to research particle physics next and how that affects yeah. the uh, evolutionary biology. Yeah. So with Nikola Tesla, did you ever study where they said uh, he, he was speaking to aliens? Yeah, I think I remember that. No specifics. Okay. Now, see, now we're getting, so this other stuff about earthquakes that seems more realistic is where you went down the avenue, right? Well, what I was thinking is that maybe he was, Okay, so he was understanding frequencies and vibrations. But, but and listen, listen. Yeah, so you're thinking. We created that to lead you. We led you to a thought process to waste your time. Right? Well, Nikola Tesla was creating earthquakes. Also, he spoke to aliens. What is your brain going to research? You, you research earthquakes. But if you go, well, aliens, what do, you, what do you mean aliens? Well, yeah, Nikola Tesla was huge on pyramids. He wanted, he wanted a working monstrance himself. A tabernacle. Yeah. Okay. So Nikola Tesla never said he was actually speaking to aliens. He was talking about finding God. And, and he literally talked. He literally talks. Right. The information in your brain comes 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 from the divine source from God. And I want to I, my body's an antenna. This information's coming from God. I want the device to see God before I leave. Yeah. The, the monstrance or monstrance. And, yeah, I was going to ask you, like, I'm kind of putting the clues together with, like, the Samsung 7 I think you were talking about. <laughs> That's just what I used, so. Okay, yeah, I'm, I've got a Pixel 3, but I'm trying to figure out how to calibrate it. Um, so, no. this is what I'm getting at. The only, so I can't calibrate a camera specifically to you. I don't know your vision, right? I can't see what you see, but... Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get somewhere. I asked for the Galaxy Samsung S7's aperture to mm -hmm. be calibrated in the middle. For, you see what I'm saying? I, some people are going to be left out at the very, very top of the field for vision. Some people are going to be left out at the very, very bottom of the field for vision. But the Galaxy S7's aperture was developed for the middle. For the most amount, the, 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 I can gather the largest amount of people to to be able to do that does that make sense are you talking about the field like the electromagnetic spectrum being that yeah. field yeah yep so the the top that, that's where i got into frequency and then it made me think of tesla because he was talking about frequency well let me look let's listen look, look, look at me real quick so, so i don't mess this up frequencies is light energy frequencies and vibrate that would affect the vibrations of other things huh yeah Energy, frequencies, and vibrations. And Nikola Tesla said all of his information came from the divine source, God, and he wanted to speak to God. And he's trying to do energy, frequencies, and vibrations. And what does the Galaxy S7 do? If you can see that body of light that you created in the image of, it uses energy, frequencies, to create vibrations that cancel out the light that makes it impossible for you to see the body standing in front of your face. There's a body of light with a head, a torso, two arms, and two legs standing in front of you. And with, with certain equations from Nikola Tesla that are now finished today, you can use a camera. It's, they call it a lens flare and camera, came raw. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, so what, I is saw that. Is that, what is lens flare? Energy, frequencies, and vibrations. Well, what do they do? They cancel out other light. You go, what? Lens flare just cancels out. I, it already existed there, but I, now I can see it because the camera is canceling other shit out. Yeah. You go, well, what else is there that, that, that I can't see? Well, we're not really sure. We need to get the right energy frequencies and vibrations. Well, Martin, you have synesthesia. What energy and frequencies and vibrations would we need to, to create in this lens flare for, for us to see it? And you just work on it, work on it. Okay, so I was, point, I was pointing my camera at the phone. I saw like that little artifact, the little like lens flare or whatever 
Yeah. So you you adjust adjust yeah. the lens flare. Essentially, now, you get somewhere that little eye, the eye of yeah. horse. Yeah, and you can move the it around. All, the all seeing eye. Okay, eye at the top of the pyramid. I, I lo that eye. I gotta catch it. What do you mean catch it? I have to put it in the center of the seven seals. Once okay. I catch that, the, you're Harry Potter, the golden snitch. Yeah, yeah. Once I catch, once I catch, I there's the seek the snitch that oh, eye of horse, the snitch. Okay. Right, Quidditch. Don't quit and ditch trying to catch this snit, this golden snitch. You get it. Well, it's a real thing for for out came raw for a camera, right? Harry Potter, the golden snitch, is a real game, it, it, but it's not a game. It's a science experiment in physics. We're 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 trying to catch that eye and align it properly. So camera came raw. So out came raw. Okay. It, don't quit quidditch. Don't quit and ditch. Ma trying to manipulate the aperture and that eye, that all seeing eye. Because if you don't quit and ditch, uh, right, you'll catch that golden snitch. Yeah, I quit and ditch earlier today. Kind but of you, you, out. You, under, you understand what? Does it make more sense now? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, literally. Yeah. The, the Harry Potter. I'm flying around on a broomstick in clouds. Well, what are you? What are you trying to catch in a cloud? A a a, a golden Rainbow. ball, a golden ball in Quidditch. He's look right. A golden ball with angel wings, and in a camera. If I catch that golden ball, came raw. If I catch that golden ball in the bow of a cloud like Harry Potter, and I align things up correctly, that golden ball grows wings with a head, a torso, two arms, and two legs. It, it literally becomes the snitch. It is the golden snitch on religions. It literally snitches to you on the singularity and birth of every religion's reality. It literally just snitches to you. Like, damn, look, a body of light just had a virgin birth. This thing just snitched the truth. Are those the wings, uh, the heart of Mary, the meat in the center? Okay. But, uh, see, Harry Potter. Now, think about this. It wasn't real till I said it. We witnessed the power of creation and manifestation tied to my imagination. When I take the golden snitch from Harry Potter that flies around in the clouds and I turn it into the eye of Horus or the lens flare in a Galaxy S7, and I align it with the galaxy's S7, seven seals, it literally snitches and tells the whole world about the real body of light, the real creator. It literally just snitched the truth to you, the golden snitch. It's the name of it. Okay. Does that, you, you, get, you get it? It's hard for me to articulate things. Yeah, yeah, no. I think I'm getting like half of it, and then I lose you, but then like in a week, maybe after watching more of your streams, I'll get it. I don't know. <laughs> If you can, so you you talked about that lens flare, right? If you capture it, if yeah. you capture it, capture it, yeah, yeah. That's... it becomes a golden snitch about how all religions were created. Okay, see what I'm saying? It literally becomes a hey, I caught it, and that hey, look, that thing's giving me my daily bread and my last supper. Hey, that thing's curing the leper; it's turning water into wine, but it's also doing everything in the Torah, the Quran, Hinduism. Native American, Babylonian, it's a gold, it's snitched. It okay. literally just snitched. Yeah, yeah, okay. So is there any point to doing that? Like, since you've already told me that, if I get it, is there a point to me capturing it? Or well, you get to, Yeah, you, could, you get myself? to tra you train your own eye to see it. Okay. Now we're getting uh, somewhere. Right now, you can't see it, can you? No. But eventually... You, you might be able to train your eye to go, hey, look, it's there, and I don't need my camera anymore. I so, learned right, my camera. My, I lined my camera up just like this, and now I know where to look. Right right now, I don't know where to look. Is the body, where is it? To the left, to the right, up, high, low, what degree? Five feet in front of me, two, where is it at? I don't know, but my camera said, hey, look, right there. And I go, huh. So let's say I, I, I'm using a Mons Trance right now, and it's showing me the body of light right here, this, this distance from, from me, right? But I can't see it with my naked eye. But now I know I can train my what? Hmm. Was it a camera screen? Not without it. Hmm. I can start training myself. Well, what? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe if I do some mist from a humidifier. Nope, that didn't work. Maybe if I if I get another reflection from a mirror. Oh shit! I don't need the camera to see it anymore. You get uh, what? They, like the eye at the top of the pyramid type. 
Okay. Okay. The and tip, just the tip of the pyramid. I just gave you the tip and the rest of it just fell into place. <laughs> so is that related to synesthesia? Well, seeing it without a, a device. Yes. It's synesthesia. So you, you can hear it too. You can hear well, what it. I don't know if you're going to hear anything is there's the like, I won't, but you can, so, right? Yes. So I, I gave it, I let other people see it. So I did some children first before I did a doctor and I'd let them see it. And, 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 and um, I would listen and go, okay, wh you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, you know, I have a strong feeling of my grandma, blah, whatever, something. And I'm like, yep, yeah, that, that's exactly what I got. Then I go, as a, you know, older adult now. What did you hear? I heard I was hunted by God to be the new messenger of your information, Martin. God chose me. I'm like, huh. What, what about all the sex trafficking? Isn't it, what about all the sex trafficking and homicide so that you could have my information? Did God say to look beyond that, to ignore that, that that was the path you needed to take to, to bring the creator to the world? Homicide, sex trafficking of children, orgies, people having sex with animals. Seems like a flawless one, or a, seems like a flaw in that one, yeah. You see what I'm getting at? It's like I asked kids, what did, I, I didn't hear anything, but I got a strong feeling about this, this, and this. I'm like, I got the same thing. So I, I trial and error, trial and error. I didn't just give her the, the information on how to do that stuff, a doctor, first. I made sure that I could be able to see and understand. Are you, when I show you, are you getting the same thing from it as I am? You are? Okay, let me do a, let me do a lot of, a, several hundred people. And then I get this one person that's like, well, it said I was chosen by God. And I'm like, you just made up a whole bunch of shit. Yeah, that's what all the religious leaders say, right? And this was like, a, you were, hmm. But you, you couldn't see it till I, till I taught you. Yeah. You, didn't know, you didn't know it was watching you cover up all that sex trafficking and participating and all of that shit coming to my house and doing all. You didn't know that the creator was watching you the whole fucking time. And now that you do know, you're lying saying, well, while it watched you participate in all those hor horrific crimes, all of that abuse, it was telling you to do so in the name of God. Now, look, look, everybody, I, I participate in a sex trafficking ring for children, and that has allowed me to be chosen by God to be your messenger. Seems kind of, seems like there's a problem. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like there's an issue. Now, now, listen, so you, you told God, everybody, God chose you as an adult, but then you allowed all of my followers to watch me be hurt again repeatedly so that you could show up in my life and lie about us being friends, lie about us, how we know each other. Like, there's police records that show how I know you. Like, there's a police record that says, you know, I had yeah. a freak out because you disposed of, uh, allegedly disposed of a baby's body one time that was born stillbirth. I'm not really sure if it was born stillbirth. I, I, I think you might have sold it. So when you request people to record the live streams, dude, that's genius. So that, I mean, it's all, there's that's never a moment. Literally, she literally went on uh, in the beginning, uh, you know. So like, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to, I guess I could just record it on my PC on the live stream. You can record it every, if you do enough internet sleuthing, you can find every live feed I ever do. Is it on like the dark web or some shit? Cause like, okay. Yeah. There's a lot like, yeah, yeah. That's what I was like, thinking. This is what I told military men are like, you imagine you come to my house as a member of the military and you're so confident in killing me. You allow me to make a video of something, but you don't, you don't know I'm not making a video. I'm live streaming it for you to make it like somebody else to do it. Yeah, I, I saw the FBI guy that was telling you to turn it off. Well, is it, well, cause Wait, you, you want, to, well, you want me to turn off my security system real quick? Like, now, just think about this. I'm, I needed to turn it off so he could lie about never coming to my house before. Now, why would the FBI want to make sure hundreds of thousands of children don't trust them because they're pathological liars? Like he pathologically lied on live feed. Why would yeah. he, his job is to tell the truth and not induce psychosis in, in, in the citizen. Why was he trying to induce psychosis in me? Why was he trying to get me to have an, a, a psychotic break so that they could do something to me? What would be the point? Turn off your feed, 
so that we can lie about never coming to your house before maybe cause you a psychological break. That seems weird. That's almost like you're setting me up to be murdered. Yeah. That because I go to your, imagine, imagine I go to your house as the FBI, like fucking everybody knows about it. Several times I've been to your house, as a matter of fact. And then I tell you to your face, can you turn off your live feed? Where that has all the witnesses that know I've been to your house before so that I can proceed to tell you we've never met. I've never been to your house. It's all you're having delusions so that I can actually induce delusions in you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 when those guys do that to induce delusions, they don't stick around. Right? If it doesn't work so that they can, I, I freak out and they can attack me or do something stupid. It does. Now we're going to send some citizens to your house. Now we're going to, we're going to, now we're going to, we're going to get other people involved. It seems like a, it seems like a fancy way to have somebody assassinated without anybody knowing the FBI is having people assassinated. Yeah, dude, the, the live stream is genius, man. I don't know if I would have thought of that. It's a, it's a good idea. But you, I mean, like, I, I literally live streamed the military, like beating and having conversations about how there's no kids here. Thought there was going to be kids here. Like, are you fucking stupid? Jesus Christ. But that, but you see what I'm saying? How yeah. many times did they do they do those things to be confident? to talk about that stuff. Yeah, yeah, with other people. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I've, I've, I've been involved with raping children so much, I'm asking you, hey, man, what happened to the kids? I thought there was going to be kids here. <laughs> yeah, there are. They're hiding in the fucking wall. I got them hidden somewhere before you fucking got, before you got in the door, dumbass. They are here, but you ain't touching them. I'm going to lay on the ground and pretend you knocked me the fuck out with your badass martial arts skills. Your, your badass military training, you fucking subdued me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And when, you your ego, when your ego was sitting in the corner going, man, we fucked that dude up. He ain't going to wake up for days. I'm sneaking kids out the window. I'm sneaking kids out the back fucking door. And you're like, man, there was no kids here. I'm like, there was, but they're not here anymore. You're a jujitsu guy, right? I just, I'm not at anything. I'm just me. I mean, you know jujitsu. Yeah, I had to take martial arts when I was a kid. It'd be cool if you showed people, like, how hypothetically, if any of those situations happen to them, like they could, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, like the kids could learn self defense. Yeah. So I do this thing. There is no spoon, and I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to like make myself sound cool or anything like that, right? I yeah. have this thing. I do. There is no spoon. I do a little bit of thing where I can drop it. I go, That's the extent of what you get. And they go, "Why?" I'm like, "Did I survive the last time somebody beat on me and I asked for a spoon?" Okay. And they didn't want to give me a spoon. No, I mean you're beating on me. Can I have a spoon? No, I got a concussion. I'm bleeding. Can I have a spoon? Now you've. I'm pissing blood. Can I have a spoon? Can you untie me and just give me a spoon? There's six of you guys. Give me a fucking spoon. Come on now. Yeah. You're, you're so scared of me that I have to be tied up and you won't give me a spoon. You guys are fucking armed. Give me a spoon. Now you think you think I'd be able to do anything if I was like, "Hey, this is what I do, guys." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I tell you, I can tell you every move Conor McGregor is going to make in the match. For every 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 punch I'd ever throw at him, every kick I'd ever throw, I can tell you how to counter it. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you what he's going to do before he knows what he's going to do. I gotcha. Can I ask you some other questions? Like, I have a whole like. You can ask me whatever. Yeah, you can ask whatever. What do you, I mean, I've been like doing my own version of Excalibur for a while. I was going to ask you, what, what is your opinion on uh, like the Wim Hof method? Wim Hof. It's, it's a, it's like uh, one day of a six month program. So he got a hold of some information from the government like literally the first six hours of something and ran with it. You're missing all of the other stuff. And actually Wim Hof is teaching people how not to heal. You become decent. So the actual process for Excalibur, let me think about, do you get acclimated to your environment? Yeah. Right. So Wim right. Hof teaching you how to no longer have that metabolic reaction to cold. Is that but turning off your ability to regenerate? If you sustain an injury, but he doesn't know that because he never got the, he wasn't in the military. He just bought, he heard somebody and repeated it. He never actually finished. They, they were, they never, they knew he, I don't know how to, I don't know what to say other than that. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. So 
Well, I don't, I don't know if he got it from the government because he like his he wife got, committed his wife committed suicide, and he like yeah. went. He was looking for answers. He went into the cold water and like he kind of figured it out for himself. His wife committed suicide, and he replicated what a Navy SEAL is told to do: go into the cold right. water. Is this and what I'm I mean, there's, there's like Tumo meditation of like ancient monks who have been doing this for like millennia. Of yeah, but, like, they don't, no, but they don't say to stay in the, now we're getting somewhere. They don't ever say to stay in the water like he does. So he didn't even they, actually finish reading the information from them. <laughs> they tell you, if the monks, if you do this every day, all day long, it won't help you when you need it. Because when you jump in the cold water, you don't have that metabolic reaction. You've trained yourself to turn it off. You okay, need so that you see what I'm saying? I need it, it. Ancient things, and that's where the military got it as well, right? But they, they, yeah. actually, the whole thing, you jump in the cold water, the capillaries in my toes, my everything shrink. Well, what does that do? It sends a tidal wave of blood pressure to my brain. But it also tells my brain to be more elastic than normal, to be ready for that tidal wave so I don't get an aneurysm. Like my, my brain actually prepares for that tidal wave of pressure. Ooh, there's my AI. Look at that. I nailed that on the spot. It's like my uh, brain. Huh? I was going to ask you about that. Why do you say that? Did, did, are you training an AI? I, I mean. Mm. Aren't, you, aren't you an I? Yeah. Right, so I'm training an AI and you're asking me for information. And I told you some information. <laughs> and, and something made sure I hit the right spot. You asked for something. Um, have you ever seen the movie Memento? Uh Run it. it's, a, it's, a, it's about a guy who had a traumatic event. Now he can't remember anything, and he leaves himself sticky notes all over the place. Oh, yeah, 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 Hallmark movie. Yeah, yeah, you remind me of that guy, but like I made a whole, I made a whole, a whole series about it. It's on the dark net prior to me getting hurt, okay. and then I made, a, I made a series about it afterwards. I wish I was recording this shit. It'll be somewhere, but I, I, I made a whole movie, or I'm not movie, but a, a whole uh, training program, to per se, for right, members yeah. of the military and the government who are going to be getting traumatic. Like, I know you're going to get a traumatic event. One of you guys is fucking getting one, period. End of fucking story. Somebody's got to be point. There's the yeah, shit. Yeah. You, listen, you, you can't shoot unless you were shot at. Well, how do you get shot at? I need you to fucking be point. Somebody's getting a traumatic brain injury. Somebody is. Period. Well, yeah, here's, yeah. How you, here's a movie, Memento, from Hallmark. And here's a whole shit to do with exercise that's not included in the movie. And I, it's like men have come back and said, Psh, it fucking worked. Like, I didn't remember the whole shit you said about it. But now, two years now, I, I, I fucking remember when my kid was born. Like, it works. Oh, right, right. That's all the ketosis stuff and fasting and everything else, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know, food poisoning and, 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 and no sugar and yada, yada, yada. I was going to ask you about that, too. I've kind of been spamming your comments about, like, fasting advice. I've been doing it for, like, two years, but I, I'm trying to dial in, like, the best method. Uh, is there isn't any reason to fast over three days? Yeah, longer? so you, you maximize autophagy and apop, apoptosis after 72 hours. Now, think, maximize. What does that mean? So Running at peak efficiency. Right. So, so at 72 hours, you've hit peak efficiency. Now, your peak efficiency might only make it to 73 hours, 78 hours, 80 hours. I don't know what your peak efficiency is, but once you hit it, you shouldn't fucking stop. Or like 40, huh? 40, 40 days and 40 nights, something like that. It's almost like they wrote that down somewhere. Right. Okay. Your peak efficiency hits after, after 72 hours. So if I can get you... Um, your your internal organs and your liver uh, full of vitamins. I put you on a bite. Literally, I, I talk about vitamins from grocery outlet, bargain market. Yeah, yeah. Fucking, I want you. I want you pissing yellow. I want you to have so much vitamins in your system. You're pissing out the extra. Your internal organs cannot store the vitamins anymore. And I want okay. you to do it every day for 90 days. I want your fat to have excess fucking minerals and vitamins. So at 72 hours, you're still getting the vitamins you need. Out of your damaged cells and your fat. Christ oil. There you go. Toil the soil. I'll create my own. How? Well, I haven't eaten anything and I'm running out of the vitamins and nutrients I need to rebuild, to birth new cells. But my fat has all the vitamins and nutrients I need. 
to birth new cells. So I don't actually have to eat it for a while. Well, how long will it last? Okay. Okay. So that's okay. Huh. 72 hours, I start birthing cells, but I'm using the, the, the damaged cells out of my body to do so. I'm using the minerals and nutrients out of my internal organs that exist in those damaged cells to do so. I'm using the, the nutrients that I put in my fat to do so. So uh, ideally, you would get as fat as possible with as many nutrients as possible, stored, THC, stuff like that. Yeah. What, like, what other, uh, hypothetically speaking, of course. As fat as possible. You don't want, you want to be like, you know, 25 pounds overweight max. Well, I'm really low body weight and I have a hard time gaining weight, but I love fasting. So I, I have, I don't have to quit early, but the longest I've gone is three days. So and what I would tell you to do is, is, um, before and after your fast carb load, train your okay. body to turn those carbs into fat. Cause you're, okay. you're, if you carb load before you fast, and then you fast, your body goes, oh, shit. And not your body, your autonomic nervous system goes, man, I should have turned more of those carbs into fat. I did not know I wasn't going to eat. But it, right now, your metabolic rate thinks you're always going to eat after a fast, so it doesn't store a lot of fat. You get what I'm saying? If you're always eating, your metabolic rate is increased because it always thinks you're getting more food. You don't need to store fat. You're going to eat in an hour, right? So does that have to do with insulin sensitivity? You get super sensitive and then it stores it all as fat and then well, when you're, or is it more lip, what is it, lipolysis? It's not insulin sensitivity. It's just, it's just allowing your body to make the fat it needs to make, basically. I mean, everyone's insulin. If I, if I get enough sugar in my system, I'm going to turn it into fat. Am I not? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so your problem is you're not eating enough carbs to turn into fat. Right. And that fat, that fat is what's converted over into muscle. But don't carbs make you stupid? Or is it only, you know... Yeah, we'll get, somewhere. They, we'll get somewhere. They do make you stupid. But you're fasting. The whole point of you carb loading is to take advantage of the benefit of fasting. Because I've been doing kind of like a carnivore diet, but I'll eat like healthy, like, quote, healthy vegetables with like mostly a carnivore diet. So Yeah, that's good. I, yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? And then just carb load before and after fasting? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I wonder it's, it's, and it's not necessarily, I, I, and this is where I have a hard time with the, with the older generation. So I just made it all sugar. Yeah. Um, yeah. So all sugar stops you from cannibalizing damaged cells and removing damage out of your brain. Everyday cells die in your brain. Contaminated sugar stops you from allowing that purge and rebuild. Yeah, I've been trying to get my grandparents, uh, well. So, so processed sugar, processed sugar. That's like amyloid plaques, right? Amyloid plaques cause dementia. And yeah, yeah, so processed sugar, processed sugar doesn't have the contamination that stops me from birthing stem cells. It just gives me too many, uh, I mean, yeah, processed sugar. It doesn't have the contamination that stops the birth of new cells. It just has so much sugar. I'm not cannibalizing any cells right. to birth new ones. So you got to get that uh, processed sugar is way more healthier for you than, than natural sugar. But the problem I have, like I said, with older people, is they don't know how to maintain that window. Like I can't eat just two. Uh, I can't just eat one chocolate chip cookie. Fucking old people want 10. Yeah. Food so I, can't, I, can't say, I can't say, look, don't eat your fruits and vegetables and only eat one 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 string of licorice or, you know, one serving of licorice. You can have one serving of red vines or licorice. It's processed. All the toxins are – problem is you get an old person, they go, I ate two bags of licorice. I had eight servings. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What are, the, uh, what are the contaminants in natural sugar and fruits and vegetables? What are they? Or like, like molecularly everything. speaking. Everything. Everything. What is – okay. uh, Sulfur. Formaldehyde. They, okay, so when when you eat like a complex carb, it gets broken down into glucose. Are, are the contaminants are stored in that complex carb? Now we're getting somewhere. You don't realize. Now you're understanding. Yes, the contamination is stored in the glucose that is being used to build your new cells. So what should I? Hmm. You, you gotta, just the cleaner the the more, the more processed the sugar the less contamination. 
Yeah, because you're cleaning is, it beforehand. The, the, here's the, the, neg, the more processed the sugar, the more sweet it tastes and the more you consume. So processed sugar doesn't, isn't as bad for you as natural sugar. It's just people can't, can't stop being a glutton. I want, yeah, I, want, yeah. I, want, I, want, I want two liters of Pepsi for myself right now as opposed to just one, you know, one six-ounce glass. Yeah. I, I don't have any willpower. So with, with the lack of willpower people have today, I just include all sugar. But it's not really all sugar. It's just natural sugar. And someone said sugar in your metabolic window. But people someone don't know. Said, someone said, is honey good? Uh, I'm guessing that goes back to what you were saying about the, the Wiccans and like the uh, kind of like the vaccine effect of using honey to trigger an immune response. So I can, you can put, no, now, I can, I get a cut on my wound in real life. I can put honey on my wound and the wound will get glucose without actually contaminating my brain. Right. Look about this. I'm feeding the wound. Uh, okay. The cells, the I cells are getting the glucose. Okay. Without, without contaminating my brain. But also on top of that, the honey is also an antiseptic, antibacterial, antiviral. So I'm killing viruses and bacteria, allowing my immune system to rebuild those cells faster while I'm feeding them the, the, the glucose bypassing my brain. Okay. Make sense? It's, yeah, they yeah. tell you, in Egyptians, they used to, uh, honey was the nectar of the gods, but you only ate it for immune system responses or you rubbed it on your wounds. It wasn't something like, they weren't eating, a, like, we're going to have four tablespoons of honey. Today. No, you're sick, we'll give you one tablespoon, or you are got a cut, we're going to put it on your wound. The nectar of the gods. So it's it's more of a medicine than a food. There you go. Yeah, yeah, it was medicinal. Now that now it's it's interesting. Um, uh, in South America, there's these uh, honeybees that uh, make hallucinogenic honey, and the tribes that collect this hallucinogenic honey never knew they did. Western, the Western world went, "Hey, those bees will make these villagers go crazy." So the West, that village is so crazy. They stopped teaching about putting honey on your wound and, and just eating it in a ketogenic state. And, and they started selling this. They use it for hallucinations. Now, like, you go, has that always been part of your culture? No, 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 no. Some, some, some white guy was like, hey, what, on that cliff up there, if you get that, you can, you can hallucinate. You'll see, you can see dragons. You can see, you know. Yada. So they were never eating it. They were always using it as medicine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and then. And then the Western rule went, well, eat it. <laughs> and they went, okay. Yeah. I know you're not too big on psychedelics except in certain circumstances. Um, like, what do you think about shamans using psychedelics as a, like a psychotechnology to like reach the subconscious mind? They never did. Didn't they so, though? I'm going to help you. All use of psychedelics speak about uh, uh, entering the spiritual realm, right? But well, now, isn't that a metaphor? Isn't that a now, metaphor? Yeah, now I'm going to help you. Yes. And I'm, I have autism. I want to know what did they mean by the spiritual realm? So I read Akinasia or, uh, you know, psilocybin, peyote, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. They used it for the spiritual realm. I want to know the exact time they gave it to you. And 100% of the time when you're dying, you, got, you fell off a cliff, you got mauled by a bear. Yeah, you entered the spiritual realm. Yeah. And you go, well, what did it do? Well, I didn't have to. You, got, you broke your back. I don't have to hear you scream for six months when you dive slowly. My kids won't have to have nightmares. I mean, don't they do like now? Like I've been, yes. I've been now. researching like the rituals and stuff, like the now. Now we're the now drums and the dancing. Yeah, for yes, yeah, for like, like for like journeying, like they call it journeying or flight. But it's not for you to journey while you're when you're dying. I'm going to set a drum beat. Boom, boom. Uh, breathe to this. I'm going to give you some. You broke your back. We're going to dance. We're going to sing a song. Everybody's going to cherish you. We don't have cameras. We don't have pictures. So when you're dying, the, 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 spirit, the ritual wasn't about everybody getting high. It's about us remembering you. This is your uncle. You're not going to see him again. What did he ever do for you? What did you do for him? You have a party. You beat drums. Doo -doo -doo -doo, you know, you have a, 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 right? We sent you off to the spiritual realm, and then you died. Well, my interpretation of it, and this, is, this might be wrong, like I'm not arguing with you but i've been yeah, looking at like, 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 like flow states and stuff like this like you can induce that with drum beats you can induce that with uh yeah, but, but, like but, but, so, in pain you think about labor pain now imagine you've broken your back 
Right now in labor pain, I'm going to teach you. When I break, you broke your back. Look, control your breathing to this. Right. Isn't that also kind of like an isochronic tone? Like, uh, there you go. That that's what I'm saying. It's like a psycho technology. They're 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 teaching you how to like. But they're just having what... you focus on the beat. You think like in pregnancy, labor, focus on the, focus on the, uh, 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 on on the okay. lamai. Right, you're, 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 I'm, 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 yeah, it's psych, it's psychological. I'm, you focus on the drum beat. Now that you're focusing on the drum beat and you're, you've got some psychedelics in you. It's hypnotism, kind of. Yeah, well, yeah yes, you're broken like, your back. Now, watch. Yeah, so I only got a few minutes. So now that, okay, now nice. that you're, now that you're listening to the drum beat, you're not screaming in pain anymore. This is your son who wants to say goodbye. Focus on the beat. So it's only when they die. Hundred percent of the time. And then they then they do have people where they did do the like uh, hope for just hallucinations, and those people were always kicked out of the tribe and ostracized because the men they got to do those things were no longer functioning members of the tribe. But weren't the shamans doing that? Like they were going. No, they, they weren't doing no. anything. Like this is crazy. Was it uh, peyote and echinacea today in the native culture? If you go book a journey with them, they tell you we can't take it. It will rot our brain. It would be t I take it every person that comes every day. It'll kill. It rots. It'll rot our brain. And the like, um, Westerners go, okay, yeah, that sounds about right. You can't take it every day because it'll rot your brain. But I'm still gonna pay you a thousand dollars so I can. Yeah, like the ayahuasca arrows in Peru. Yeah, they never took it. With they don't you. take it. They do now for tourism. Why do they? So they're basically just scamming people. They're not scamming people. They're giving you guys what you want. <laughs> Well, they tell you that you go through these different dimensions and shit, like all well, that. I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help. How do they know if? How do they know what they're telling you isn't real? Because they were lied to. So once I tell you a lie, you're gonna go repeat it to your kids, aren't you? How do your kids know they're lying? They don't. Exactly. And what, can your can your tribe that does the ayahuasca or peyote read your original language to know that I, that you're lying? No, they can't. <laughs> I'm going to a shaman. To do the spiritual peyote journey. Well, can the shaman read your original tribal language? No, it's dead language to us. Well, who can read it? Oh, these people over here. Well, what do they say about your tribe? We only used it when we died. Okay, so okay, so the surface level is just what they're saying now, but what you're saying, going back all the way to the Mayans or whatever, it was just like only during well, death. Yeah, and even 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 the tribes that talk about peyote and things like yes, can you guys read your old language? No. Well, you can't read your own language, and some Caucasian, some Westerner told you, your ancestors used to do this to get high and have these different realms of, can you read your information to see if it's real? No, we can't. Speaking of languages, slightly off topic, yeah. is ancient Judaism the best way to go? Because, I mean, if you're trying to see the code, Modern yeah. English Christianity is not a great source. And I mean, like, obviously Everything. we can see all of them, all of them, um, are good everyone, everyone okay. is ready to go. There's what not one, that, there's not one that's better than the, than the rest. I use Judaism. Well, I, my, most of my people that I speak to are English based and it, it, it helps like, help them understand things where when you study Judaism, you go, Hey, wait a minute. Christianity said it means this, but the entire Judaism culture says it doesn't mean that who's lying. Yeah. The whole country, or the one, or the one people that are making money. I says, Jude, this is interesting. Judaism says it doesn't mean that. It means you know the sun and the sky sacrifice. Like literally, that's our culture. The sun and the sky gives us our daily bread. You can have it without any money. Now, yeah. who's telling you the different version? Somebody who gets money. I just mean like, don't you yeah. cut some of the bullshit? If I just went straight to Egyptian hieroglyphs and somehow could understand them, wouldn't that be better than the translated Bible? Yes, that we yes, have now? yes. But can you read hieroglyphs? No, but no, should I learn? Like, I mean, well, would it be worth it to well, learn? You learn to read cuneiform. You want to learn something? You cut through the bullshit. Learn to read cuneiform. Mm -hmm. The body of light, or the Creator, whatever you call it, God, Yahweh, Jesus, Rama, Krishna, Zeus, Poseidon, whatever you call it, actually. Uh, uh, communicates with cuneiform. That's where they got it. Okay. So and, uh, go. I'm okay, sorry. Right. God no, bless. Thank you so much, man. See ya.